Inquiry is meant to be a significant part of BC's new curriculum, but it's a new teaching approach for many science teachers. This video is intended for teachers who have never tried student-directed science inquiry in their classrooms and who are unsure where to start. In Inquiry, students investigate their own questions about their learning with the support of their teacher. The Inquiry process is essentially the same across all human cultures. By observing, questioning, and trying new things, we grow as people. By reflecting on what we have done, we learn. And by learning from our experience and the experiences of others, and trying things in new ways, we grow some more. This is actually the same process as what we call the scientific method. This is just the way people are wired to learn. If you look at a young baby in a high chair, they will randomly knock things off their tray as they swing their arms around. Soon enough, the baby will notice that they made that happen. If an adult puts things back on the tray, the baby soon knocks them off again and figures, if I hit things, they'll fall, which is essentially making a hypothesis. The adult can put all kinds of things on the tray and it becomes a game or experiment to knock them off. Now, it gets interesting if the adult blows up a balloon and gives it to the baby and lets them knock it off and then gives the baby a helium-filled balloon. When the baby tries to knock this balloon off, Instead of falling to the floor, it rises up to the ceiling. I would recommend doing this indoors to save the baby from crying about losing the balloon. The sense of wonder we see on the baby's face is the same sense of wonder we want to bring to our classroom. Now the baby needs to revise their hypothesis and try some new experiments to satisfy their curiosity. That is the cycle of inquiry. It's what allows us to learn about the world around us and make sense of it, and not only survive, but thrive, and that is science. If we can bring that sense of wonder and play into our classrooms, regardless of the level of student, we see an increase in student engagement. That increase in engagement leads to students being willing to take greater risks in class, and that, in turn, leads to increased student achievement. Primary and junior classes usually have play-based learning integrated into what they do for this reason. While some people may find dealing with adolescents challenging, it is especially important for adolescents to be given the opportunity to question the world around them. Without new generations questioning and improving on the work of previous generations, or picking up and moving to new places, we wouldn't have progressed as a species. This is true whether we are speaking of the historical knowledge of Aboriginal peoples, which allowed them to thrive using natural materials, or how we deepen our understanding of how people think and relate to each other in society, or the development of any artistic endeavor or any technological advancement. Adolescents need to develop their own identity and having the opportunity to engage in inquiry that is personally relevant to them will help them build their understanding and ultimately help us progress as a society. When we look at the spectrum of inquiry, confirmation activities that most of us are familiar with are at the far end. These are entirely teacher directed. A structured activity would provide the question and method, but students would develop their own reflection. A guided activity is one where the teacher would provide the question and students develop hypotheses and their own experiments. Getting to this stage with a class is a huge step toward developing student independence. The highest level of student independence is found in open inquiry. Open inquiry is the type of inquiry we see at science fairs and in projects that are completely student directed. After noticing things in the world around them, the next step is building a good question to drive that inquiry. Students will initially need this to be modeled, but it won't take long before most of them can do this quite well independently. The type of inquiry you choose to do with your students can really vary. It's usually easier to start small, even with an activity that only takes 15 or 20 minutes. This allows students to feel success right away and builds enthusiasm, and it's a lot easier on the teacher in terms of planning as well. There are many websites and online supports with ready-made inquiry projects that can be shared, especially for longer units. You can check out your regional science fairs for excellent examples of deep, open inquiries. When you become more comfortable, you might want to do a project-based learning activity with your class to further develop their collaborative skills. Generally speaking, starting with simple scientific experiments where students change one variable at a time and carry out fair tests are a great way to get started. Some students need more support or scaffolding than others, so a gradual release of responsibility can be very helpful in differentiating in the classroom. A couple of examples that work well and are easy to use in the classroom are gummy bear activities and plant experiments. In the gummy bear activity, you might ask students what will happen if a gummy bear is soaked in water overnight. 
This is an activity that could be enriched in many ways. Ask them to come up with predictions, use vinegar or salt water or other liquids and compare the effect to that of fresh water. Put a gummy bear in the fridge overnight and compare it to one left on the counter. Take the mass of the bear before and after and make comparisons, compare densities, compare the color or texture change, or other factors. With gummy bears and cups of water, we can go pretty deeply into basic experimental design and introduce vocabulary like controlled variable, experimental variable, quantitative and qualitative observations, and encourage students to research why they observed what they did, evaluate their hypotheses, identify sources of error, maybe using different colors or brands of gummy bears to compare, and, and what they would do if they were to do another experiment. It's very ex inexpensive and can be adapted to all levels of student. A longer inquiry that works well as a guided inquiry is to ask the students, what's the effect of salt on plant growth? Students could be provided with soil, cups to grow plants in, and a box of bean seeds and table salt. They would then develop their hypotheses, plan their experiments. They could ask for whatever materials they might need, lab equipment, scales, graduated cylinders, measuring spoons, jugs to mix salt water, whatever they want. For students that live in snowy places, they might already know the answer to this question. But for those growing up on the coast, they often have no idea and actually think salt acts like a fertilizer. This can result in quite complex experiments with many plant pots of varying concentration of salt water added, or sometimes students choose to mix salt with the soil or sprinkle it on top of the soil, they need to consider what variables to control and what they will do if one of their seeds is a dud. How can they build a reliable experiment with valid data? Other chemicals could be tried as well. This could tie into topics like protection of watersheds, salination of fresh water supplies, and nutrient cycles. As we move from confirmation activities to structured through guided into an open model of inquiry in our classrooms, some students will struggle. This might be due to confidence or lack of content knowledge or a number of other reasons. It takes some time for stronger students to be willing to let experiments go wrong sometimes. However, the results are still data, even if they are quote unquote wrong. What is more important is that they be encouraged to move along the continuum from structure to open inquiry. Some students will not be comfortable progressing beyond short inquiries that can be done in one class, and some students will choose to undertake self-directed inquiries that would last months. By scaffolding, we can help students self-differentiate their work and see an increase in student engagement. This can be very powerful when students collaborate and bring in knowledge from different subject areas in integrated projects. Inquiry activities do take time. Generally speaking, compared to a traditional hands-on laboratory activity where the student is given the procedure to follow and discussion questions to answer, a student-driven inquiry activity would generally take three to four times as long to carry out. However, the students are not just learning content, but also the processes involved in thinking like a scientist. They are engaging in higher levels of critical thinking by developing hypotheses, designing their own experiments, analyzing and communicating results, and reflecting on their work using the habits of mind as a scientist. Different skills are being taught, and that takes time, but it really is worth it.